how you're going. Now I've wanted to do a spearfishing video for a while, but I haven't, as I don't really live near the water, and I also didn't want to be associated with men that hunt. You know, the men with all the camo gear that fly around the world in private jets, just to blow away a stationary giraffe with a 50 BMG. Claiming they are alpha men, gathering meat in a pure, natural way like our ancestors. But not really. Who made that weapon and all their gear? A team of Chinese people. They're the ones actually responsible for that catch, which doesn't seem fair to the animal or the Chinese workers. But now, I finally have an excuse to make my own spear chucker, as I'm heading away for a week with the family, and I've tried hunting supermarket fish, but it just isn't very impressive. So I'm gonna try and catch it fresh from the ocean myself. Now I have spearfished a couple of times in the past, and there's something that really annoys me about it. It's really hard and uncomfortable to load, even for someone with lanky arms like myself. And I could just buy a shorter spear, but it will be a lot more fun building a crappy one that will likely spear me instead. I also want this to be easy enough for any of you watching to make. That's right, 11 year old kid that's definitely responsible enough to have a deadly weapon. This one's for you. So it's gonna be made entirely out of things you can find at home. Okay, so the first thing I did was leave my home and found some rubbish piles on the street and went through them until I found some long PVC pipe. And you can usually find cutoffs in bins at construction sites or behind the tiles in your bathroom. And once we've got the PVC, I need to work out how long it needs to be. And a good way to do this is to put it along your arm and mark where it reaches your chest. Or if that's too hard, you can just remove your arm and place it along the PVC pipe instead. Okay, now I'm just gonna bend the PVC to shape using this heat gun. And if you don't have one of these, don't worry. You can use steam, a flame, or even stick it into the exhaust of a running car. <coughs> so once the pipe starts to get floppy, I just bent it around a bolt. And now we have the same pipe, but bent in half. Amazing. And before I bend it anymore, I'm gonna try and come up with a trigger mechanism. And I reckon I might be able to make the whole thing out of this one spanner. Now, if you want, you can use any of the other spanners here, like this one or this one, but not this one, as that's my granddad's. But you better hurry up, as I only have four left. All right, I'm just gonna cut it in half with a bandsaw. And I actually heard about a little trick if you wanna know the age of any spanner. All you need to do is cut them and then count the rings in the cross section. This one is 12 years old, which is very young, as they've been known to live until 200. Okay, so this is my plan. I have the two sections of the spanner here. This one latches onto the spear holding it and is unable to move because it's making contact with this other piece here. Then when you press on this piece, it moves out of the way of the other, allowing the top latch to rotate, releasing the spear. And I just made this up, so I have no idea whether it will actually work in practice. Then I just drilled a couple of holes and put the trigger mechanism in between the pipes and then bent the handle to shape on this cutoff from my giant Beyblade. And with regular spear guns, they always have a really small, sharp butt, which cuts open your chest if you don't have a wetsuit designed for spearfishing, almost as if the companies are forcing you to buy a more expensive wetsuit. So with mine, I'm hoping that my handle will be large enough and slightly flexible so this won't happen. And look at this, it already kind of looks like a spear chucker. Now, I just need to make a hole for the spear rubber. And just like when you use a rubber, we need to make sure that the surface is nice and smooth, removing sharp bits that would break the rubber, resulting in an unwanted misfire. So, I did what I usually do and used a file to smoothen the hole of my pipe. Now we need to make the actual spear, and a great cheap option is a threaded rod, which you can get for a couple of bucks, or you can pull the shaft out of a whippersnipper. But I've got an extra spear from my mate, so I'm just gonna use that, and after some slight modifications, it's good to go. Now to latch the spear onto the trigger mechanism, I need to attach a wire. And I did this by passing the wire through the hands of this chimp. Sorry, I meant the holes of this crimp. And usually you need to use a crimping tool, which costs like 80 bucks. But I have these old bolt cutters from my bike stealing days, which don't work very well anymore. So I just grinded down the jaws so they weren't sharp and then squished the crimps, which seems to have worked pretty well. And now because I'm making my own spear chucker, I thought I'd go a little bit crazy and try something I've never seen before and use some really strong magnets to hold the spear in the rail, which should make it really easy to reload and means I won't have to muck around with wrapping the rope up. 
So I just made some little holes in the pipe and then epoxied the magnets in place. And this works really well. The spear doesn't want to slip out. And I could stop now, but it just doesn't look very good. And usually when you see other YouTubers homemade spears, they look absolutely awful. So I'm hoping I can give mine a paint job, which might trick some of the other spearfishers into thinking I have a real spear gun. And carbon fiber seems to be the creme de la creme of spears. Ooh, and I reckon I can recreate that look with some stuff at home. So I'm going to take this non-slip mat, which sits at the entrance of my garage and use it as a template. So I just gave the spear a black undercoat and then placed the mat on top and sprayed silver through the holes in an even pattern. Creating this. Ooh, barracuda. And this is going to be really hard to spray evenly. So I gave up and decided I'm going to attempt a camo instead, as hopefully the camo will hide all the flaws in my paint job as well as the spear gun. And I'm going to do this by spraying four different blue paints through these various shaped templates to hopefully create a sea camo pattern. And after the first couple of sprays, I started to regret painting this camo, as when camo paint jobs look bad, they are incredibly embarrassing, kind of like a little kid that's painted their Nerf gun. But the camo turned out way better than I expected. So I just picked it up and gave it a couple of sprays of clear coat to make the camo paint more weather resistant. And now to attach the rubber, which will chuck the spear. And you can get rubbers from all kinds of places. I got these rubbers from the dumpster of a gym, which I presume they were using to make spear guns. But you can also use the inner tube of a bicycle tire or even lots of elastic bands. And to connect the rubber together, I poked a strong cord with a knot inside and then zip tied the end to stop the cord from slipping out. Then lastly, I just attached a rope to the spear and looped it around the trigger mechanism so that when I fire, it releases. And now I've got a pretty good looking spear chucker, but does it work? Let's go test it out. Okay, before I go and get myself killed, I decided I should probably meet up with an experienced spearfisher. So I contacted Sam from Wet Mammal, who trusted I wouldn't shoot him and took me out to catch some fish. Hey Sam, dumb question, but safety on the gun, on is the safety's on and off is safety's off. I think so. So I'm guessing, <laughs> safety off. Yeah, safety off is, is, when, you is when you shoot. Yeah. yeah. Also, um, spit your snorkel. Spit in it? Don't know. Sorry, just when, when you take a dive, don't have it in your mouth. Oh, why? Yeah. Uh, to do with blackout, you, if you just your mouth open, you'll freeze in water. Ah, oh, okay. So if, you, if you black out and your mouth is closed, you just won't. You'll, you'll, you'll stay closed. So, after some quick tips on how to not die, I dove down to take my first shot at a red rock cod. Which is meant to taste like lobster, but unfortunately I will never know if that's true or not, as I missed my first shot. And my second. And in an attempt to get some more fish to come over for me to miss, Sam set up a flasher, 
which is shiny and mimics a school of fish, which then attracts the predatory fish for us to shoot. And it worked, as before long, a massive school of Aussie salmon showed up. And I'd never seen a school of fish this big before, so I excitedly loaded my gun and dived down to fling a spear at them. Salmon travel in large schools, as big numbers of fish make it very hard to pick a single target, protecting them from getting shot. Which worked, as I missed. And if only this same tactic also worked for kids in American schools. So I quickly swam back to the surface and frantically loaded my gun, hoping the salmon would still be there when I dived back down. and I finally managed to snag a fish in the tail, which is good, but I've never actually speared a fish big enough to put up a fight, so I didn't really know what to do next. And now I'm desperately splashing around on the surface, looking around, trying to spot Sam to ask him what to do. So I decided to grab the fish and finish it with my knife, but it wasn't having any of it, and it managed to escape off the spear. <laughs> I can't believe that! You came off! <laughs> but luckily, not all of us were losing fish, and Sam's mate managed to shoot a kingfish, but was worried it would come off and wanted me to shoot it again to secure it. You already shoot it? Which should be easy enough to shoot an already shot fish. And no. But luckily Sam doesn't miss. And when I asked Sam to take me spearing, he told me he would take me to a great spot with lots of fish, which there are. I don't think I've ever seen a place with this many fish besides the market. But what he didn't tell me was that there would also be sharks. And at first I got the poop scared out of me, before realising they were grey nurses, a relatively harmless kind of shark. It's grey nurses! So I dove down to take a look. finding a whole group of them just chilling out in a cave, as well as the largest Wobbegon shark I've ever seen. And grey nurse sharks are actually endangered now, as sharks were mass killed in Australia, especially the grey nurses, whose timid nature meant they were an easy target for fishermen with their power head spear guns, literally a bullet strapped to the end of a spear. So hopefully these endangered sharks will get to snack on that salmon that I injured earlier. And after two more hours of searching for fish, we decide to call it a day. And if you want to see Sam not missing fish, head over to his YouTube channel, Wet Mammal, link in the description. So I packed my stuff and headed down to Jarvis Bay, a place known for its super white sand, its white sharks and its white supremacists. On the first day, I tried going out after a storm, which meant the visibility was atrocious and I didn't see much besides a big octopus and a stingray, which I didn't realize was electric until after I played with it. But on the second day, the visibility cleared up and there were fish everywhere. Like this massive blue groper, which looks delicious, but are protected as they used to be hunted like crazy. And stingrays piled on top of each other. and hundreds and hundreds of luderic. So many fish that I couldn't decide which one to shoot at. And you may have noticed I'm staying in relatively shallow water, and that's because I don't think my spear is going to have a very big range, not because I'm scared of sharks or anything. And after flapping around for half an hour, I finally lined up a good shot and... the gun stuffed up. 
so I reloaded after spotting a good sized brim in the distance and dove down. And you can probably tell from my gleeful screams that I'm pretty excited about catching my first fish. So now to get a few more for dinner. Next, I found a luderick hiding in between some rocks. And then managed to sneak up on another brim. And lastly, got a delicious sand whiting. which is definitely enough fish for a decent feed. Now I'm not completely sure if all these fish are bigger than the legal size, so here's the moment of truth. Will I be crucified by thousands of fishermen online? First up, the luderick. Then the brim. The whiting. And lucky last, the brim. So now that I'm not a criminal, I scaled and gutted the fish in preparation for cooking. Fish. Do you want the fish? <laughs> I didn't expect him to actually want to hold it. No, it's a bit spiky. Ouch, fish. Hey, look at that big spiky fish. Wow. Yeah, wow. Wow. It's water. It's in the water. But this isn't where they live. They don't live in the bucket. More fish. <laughs> there are more fish in there. Yeah, we're going to eat the fish. It's a fish. Do you want to eat them? Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> as long as you know where they come from. And after picking out all the scales from my hair, I chucked the fish on the barbecue with a little pepper and salt, which is actually a little ambitious for me, as I always seem to have trouble cooking fish as it sticks to everything it touches. But it turned out pretty good, resulting in one happy baby. What do you think of the fish? Fish. The fish? Does uh. it look yummy? Now, ignoring what I said about hunting in the intro, spearfishing is probably the most responsible way of eating food. Although, maybe not when I do it, as half the fish I shoot seem to escape injured and traumatized. But even then, it's still much better than sea trawling, which literally scoops up everything in its path from seabirds to sea dolphins. Imagine how much better the world would be if the only way to eat meat was if you caught it yourself. 90% of us would probably starve. Actually, then I would lose all my subscribers. No, I'm taking that back. Please keep eating factory farmed food. Thank you so much for watching. If you like that, please subscribe and check out some of my other videos.